going with us as we keep an eye on what is happening here from coast to coast. Some people are going to start their day cleaning up the trail of damage left behind Tuesday storms. I mean, look at all of this, and this is just a small portion of what we've seen. Much of it across Texas where some schools are closed and first responders survey recovery efforts, especially across the Dallas metro where there are still so many without power. It basically was like a hurricane that came through here. When you look at the extent of the winds and how big it was. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talk about damaging winds a yeah. lot with these thunderstorms. This was extreme. I mean, high end damaging wind moving over a pretty large zone and a populous city, right? Yeah, and I remember listening to some of the video that we showed yesterday. Uh, it sounded like a hurricane. Mm -hmm. The trees were whipping around. Mm -hmm. uh, the damage was reminiscent of some tropical cyclones. So there are characteristics that are comparable here. Yeah. And it is uh, one of those things that happens, carries over a large area, and can do a lot of damage. And then eventually there's a resurgence down to southeast Texas. We saw storms in Houston. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of the area uh, saw a lot of severe weather that's leaving a lot to clean up here. Thankfully, the weather is better today. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have this big cluster of storms right. that we're dealing with this morning. Getting a bit of a break yeah uh, but it is just a break the threat for more right. storms throughout right. the week let's let's talk about where we stand though right now and you guys have mentioned you know all, all these storms coming through that's left us here with a lot of pattern of wet and stormy weather that uh, is pulling into the Gulf Coast here so looking ahead rainy skies thunder and maybe some lightning will be making an appearance in both Houston and New Orleans as we look at tomorrow's forecast plus we are watching some flood threats across not just here but the entire southern plains getting into the weekend because we've got a lot of rain coming in over the next few days so as we look ahead to what's coming our way Greg talked about the severe weather aspect of it the damaging winds the hail the tornado risk I want to look at the flooding aspect of what's going to happen with this pattern that we're in it's a very stuck pattern high pressure over here over eastern Canada and that's going to kind of anchor and they'll keep you under some nice weather in a lot of the eastern half of the country but what it's going to do in the middle is block things from pushing east so we end up with disturbance after disturbance that comes right in and affects us across the middle of the country and by Friday we're still looking at thunderstorms potentially severe watching across a lot of Texas up into uh, Arkansas again and Oklahoma as well and even in Louisiana. It's been very rainy already so far this year, and now we're going to bring in more rainfall. This is the forecast through Friday. Widespread areas getting several inches of rain on top of what we just saw, too. There were a number of areas yesterday that had readings of seven inches of rain, especially in North Texas there, after the rainfall from yesterday. And now we bring in at least another two or three inches of rainfall. That's just through Friday, watching that extend all the way up through the Central Plains. This is on top of a very wet year to date. Dallas, you're running your third wettest year to date. Monroe, Louisiana, you're a top three or top two year to date. A number of spots. Beaumont, another one here. You're within the top three wettest years to date. It's been a wet one, no, no doubt. Uh, interestingly, I was checking some of the dry spots like down in Del Rio, Texas, where our second driest year to date. Not even had an inch of rain so far this year. So who's going to get the rain this week? It's going to be a lot of those haves. Who, who, those who have already gotten the rainfall are going to see it again as we get through this week. It's wet in eastern Texas. Texas. It's wet through Oklahoma, wet through Kansas. We're going to keep on adding in as we get through the week here. And rainfall finally by Friday starts to nudge a little further east, but not far. So it keeps these flooding concerns here day after day after day. And this is not the only area of the country that has had repeated rounds of storms, Alex. Yeah. Cooler air and drier air mass to give us a bit of a break from some of the heat and humidity. Well, while we were talking, you know, of course, we weren't listening to your forecast. Uh, that's but a joke, we were actually. watching. We were watching, oh, but nice. not listening. No, we were actually talking about the system you were tracking through yeah. the Ohio Valley Northwest. It's a clipper, pretty much. It is. If, if this was January, yes. we would be dealing with a bit yes. of the flight. So we got a big trough on the East Coast. Yeah. yeah. The summer. It's the summer clipper. Yeah. Well, from Coney Island to Orange Beach, there yes. are. But how do you know it's bad? Yeah, is that's the question. The question. Cause sometimes you, you don't know what's lurking out there, right? Whether it's, sometimes there's sea creatures that you can't see with the naked Marine eye. Marine pests, you know, Marine jellyfish. Pests. Yes. <laughs> All kinds of sea creatures well, you out there. Well, you and Greg and everyone can go to Threads <laughs> and share your comments and pick some video too with us using the hashtag YesTV, and we will share them on the show. It is an the Steel City and much of the Northeast. It has been a dreary few days here in Pittsburgh and today no different waking up to some fog as you cross the Roberto Clemente Bridge. Uh, that's going to give way to some rain that's uh, going to drench the Keystone State uh, as well as its neighbors. So yeah, a number of spots here are going to get involved in some of this mm -hmm. rain with the system that's uh, kind of quickly moving and mosing on through, uh, but also 
ushering in some slightly cooler air, I would yeah. say. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, early start to June kind of pattern this week. Uh, it's, it's been a wet month for the month of May here through the Northeast. It's been a wet year for some of you. Virginia Beach and Norfolk area coming in with some of their top wettest. But all of us have had a decent mm -hmm. amount of rainfall. So now as we get ahead into this last week of May, the beginning of June here by the weekend, we've got more rain coming in, but it's not going to be the heavy rain like we've seen. Yeah, we're not looking for heftier downpours out there. And most of the rainfall that we see in these areas will add up to less than an inch of rain out there. But nonetheless, there could be some pockets, a storm or two mm -hmm. that dump some heavier rain and that could trigger a flash flood very isolated in nature here. Yeah, we were comparing this to a clipper earlier yep, yep. in the show and you know, you think about clippers, they they in this wintertime, they bring snow, but usually not a ton, right? And so that's kind of how the system will be. It'll bring rain, not a ton. Somewhere there might be some overachieving rainfall that could lead to some flash flooding concerns. Where you see some of the yellows on the radar, that would be the spots getting some heavy rain right now. But it's not everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Again, very far and few between uh, in terms of that. And so you'll watch how that all progresses east as we move our way through the day. So eventually filling in down towards D.C. later on as we get closer towards the rush hour. Heads up there, Baltimore as well. And it's to the east coast as well. Yeah, I mean, this could mean some travel delays. I have to watch the airports here, interstates as well. Could be slow going as we watch all this rain come down in eastern PA through New Jersey. New York City, it comes in overnight into early tomorrow morning. So mm -hmm. tomorrow's rush hour could be iffy, depending on when this rain moves out. Yeah, and eventually we'll see some of this wet weather get up towards the Boston metro. So heads up there late morning, afternoon. Things will be gray and showery there, while everyone else actually enjoys quieter times here, at least for the first part of our Thursday. And our temperatures are going to be on the cooler side. Yeah. We're running in the 60s, near 70s, grit, and DC will be 77. This is all going to be quite comfortable, actually. As yeah, we... remember we were talking DC in those 90s a few weeks ago? Yeah. Enjoy this. Shores of Lake Michigan's ditching the beach flags for electronic towers. It's actually the first state park to roll out this new safety tool. So for more, we bring in Pat Whalen, the Plainville, Plainwell. Yeah, maybe yeah. spreads to the whole country. I just think, you know, the kids. They're going to notice a light more than a flag. Yes, yes, you know. good call. Well, don't forget what you folks to do, mm -hmm. um, and it's key. You know, I know it can be confusing, though. When you have a yellow flag day, it literally means everything. There could be rip currents. Right. Not the worst day, but there's the chance of them. Yeah, so what do you do? Right, you're always alert, and you know how to swim before you go in the ocean, and you swim with a buddy, and you swim with a lifeguard, and you do all those things to stay safe.